we have become very um there's a lot that we take for granted but god is going to take care of that in the years to come he loves us too much to leave us in a state of passivity where being the church is called to be the church i trust him so much that i don't feel the need to keep saying that life is not going to get easier we are going to find that out and everything that you're learning now you need to apply because you're going to need it god is calling his servants to simply preach the word and hearts hopefully will receive it and if they don't they'll be like the 10 virgins who some had oil and some did not that's the bottom line so i want you to understand that you will remember me saying you need to apply everything you're learning that you've learned before and that you're learning now um many want a quick fix many come from the school of pray cast out the demons you'll be fine i don't come from that school so the approach that i'm trained to use might seem a little slow for those who want a quick fix but i know the race to be slow and steady i also know that as the land is cleared you learn to maintain the cleared land if too much of the land is cleared all at once you become like those who keep coming back over and over for help but i also want to caution some of you that believe that when you are either suffering from some terrible illness or you literally find yourself struggling spiritually that your answer for that does not lie in the fact that you don't understand the layers of defilement that is in our foundation this is not condemnation it ha- it is not it is not taught by many who call themselves deliverance ministers and i don't doubt that they are but they lead people to believe they just need an anointed person to pray for them cast out the demons and they will be fine but there is a generational line that needs cleansing that does not cleanse overnight it's slow and steady little by little and the reason why you may get counter tax when you either come into god's presence or take part in something like maybe this is not because what you've heard did not do damage to the enemy it's because it did damage to the enemy because i get back messages from people like for example the freemason seminars that we have the group sessions as we go deeper and deeper some of you are not going to leave those sessions all settled all the time if you message me i'll be able to help you but if you don't that's okay because it's okay to begin to deal with things on your own if you want to that's not a problem but what you need to understand is that you are simply seeing yourself going through this life walking with jesus you're not understanding that the enemy's plan is to simply take us down and take us out and what he wants to do is 
do it any way he can. And you need to know that his goal and his vision is simply to cripple our faith. So if you could get several attacks all the time, it will discourage you. He wants to cripple your spiritual walk. He wants to cripple your body. So he's not satisfied with keeping you back spiritually. He wants to make you feel so ill that you can't function. And he wants to cripple your finances. Am I saying that there is a formula to apply to make everything stop? I'm going to share some things with you that will help you. But you have to understand that because the enemy wants to make us lame mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, so that we literally become spineless against powers and principalities, we know, we are taught, we learn. Some of what we are reaping, we ourselves didn't sow. And it has been taking place in the generations before us in our generational line. And no one but you perhaps ever started to deal with what happened 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago in your generational line because it's quite possible no one else in your family is saved. So you are upsetting the agenda of Satan to take you down, out, and make you come off that narrow road and give up on living for Jesus. And that's why I said earlier, and that's why sometimes I would wish that even if you come in two hours later, that's okay. It's not like you have to come from two. Make the effort to listen to all parts of tarrying. Because you may come for a part that will feed you, but there's another part that started the feeding. And I said earlier, you don't wait for everything to be fine to be praising him. Satan hates it when in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the worst things happening, in the midst of the worst pain, the worst drama, you begin to sing, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. Hallelujah. What's the next line? All you know it. As thou hast been, thou forever will be as thou has been thou forever will be as thou has been thou forever will be great is thy faithfulness so if you are a person that can only sing that song in worship to him after you're feeling better the devil will lick you up all the time because that's the only time you will sing, so he will make sure that you can't. Do you understand? But it's not just that. It's that you need to understand that there are layers of stuff that is like a plan for your entire family to serve Satan for the rest of their lives. And you've come with your bold-faced self to declare that you, just one area, dealing with Freemasonry, 
Don't talk about all those other areas. And Freemasonry, the gods of Freemasonry is about 20 or 30 gods that include lots of different pagan religions. And you're in a country where if you check your family tree and heritage, you're Kalalu. So all the worship of those pagan gods is in your generational line. Last I heard, the sin of Adam is still affecting me. So don't tell me that what my ancestors did can't affect me. But just like with the sin of Adam, through the blood, God made a way for me. He's made a way through the blood. When I say I reject the sin of Adam, I reject anything that was sown on my behalf or spoken on my behalf, I will not reap what I didn't sow. So why am I saying this is because... You could say a million prayer points and still be in the same place where you are from yesterday to today. Because perhaps you don't understand that perhaps there's an attack from a different direction. So what do we do, y'all? What do we do? First of all, we don't become discouraged and think this is too difficult. But I have seen people little by little by little, their lives are changing. And whatever is being offered to them to eat, because where God has planted them is where they are going to be fed. There's a big difference between moonlighting all over the place, because God knows what you need, and he will take you and plant you somewhere where you will receive what you need for your walk, just like he knows the family that he has placed you in. Because perhaps you're the only one in the family that's saved. And he wants you and your household to be saved. So he plants you. So all those people that aggravate you day after day in your family. What if you know that when they die, they will go to hell. Forever, eternity, burn in hell. Think about it. If they are not saved, that's where they're going. So God has planted you there to get strong, to get spiritually healthy. But you do need to understand that you cannot stay lame in this hour. You have to be able to keep running. And the religious approach of it's only about demons. And if you interfere with them, they're going to counterattack you. They will counterattack you because there's still stuff in your foundation that needs to go. But it doesn't mean that you are not walking holy. It means that some areas are still not cleaned up. He, the enemy, only has legal rights to attack back in areas where he has legal rights still. Are you understanding me? So Job was a righteous man, but there was a little bit of maybe fearfulness because he never wanted, he always worried about his children, his family. I'm not going to start to talk about his character, but there's been an area that the enemy had the legal right and he was given permission. So I want to encourage you to allow your life before the Lord for change to come little by little so that you can maintain your freedom. But as I said to you earlier, and I'm going to tell you now, my understanding of spiritual warfare is very different to, to the religious understanding. Because I don't feel the need at times to get myself all worked up to trample on the devil. Because my father, he does not sleep nor slumber. I can sleep, and that's warfare. Because if my walk is holy, that's warfare. Do you understand? And there are areas in my foundation, I keep telling you all that Freemasons on both sides, that might still need cleaning up. So when I'm renouncing with you all, I am also renouncing and asking God. For if there's some part there I didn't understand, it's not a one and done. 
but it's not an obsession. I'm not going to sit down and have lunch with somebody and I can't stop thinking about I need to renounce because. Listen, the devil's supposed to wake up every morning and see me awake and sigh because of another day that he has to battle. Why? Because whatever he throws my way, Great is thy faithful. Listen to me earlier. Don't push me to say the things that happen to come my way every day. Because I want you to understand. Because I don't look the part, to mean and not walk in the path. Do you understand what I'm saying? You learn to worship him no matter what. That's the weapon that you have to use, but you must walk holy. Don't come with the, the talk that you love God and you're not setting a, a guard on your eyes or on your ears. And while that is happening, you know that in your ancestral line, if you were to trace back where you came from, is all kind of different paganisms that went on. And you land up in a church that understands that the spots and wrinkles that God is talking about is not only walking holy, because he would have said, just be holy as I'm holy and I'm coming back for you. He said he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. And then he told David about purging him like hyssop. And he shall be clean. And they're deep and hidden things. So there's things that are hidden. So therefore that catches your attention. It should be Lord. What is hidden that I don't know. That is causing my life to be affected in such a way that it is discouraging me. Jesus said when the evil one shall come he will not find anything in me. You say well that was Jesus. Of course it was Jesus. He had no sin. Why did he say it? He had no sin. The, he, the enemy would not find anything in him. However, we are not without sin. So therefore, our walk has to be not sitting down and trying to bust your head open to figure out because that's using your own strength. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. When I spend my time with him that I'm supposed to, he will lead me to want to renounce and reject certain things. He will lead me to want to listen to messages that will feed my soul. He will lead me to want to, to spend time in worship. It will not be, I know I need him, you know. I know I need him, but you know, I have this and that and the others. I told you all, there are many voices and that's our problem. Too many voices around, not enough time, sitting in silence, waiting on him. So. I want to tell you that as time goes on in this church and we begin to take a part, just one area, I, if I come with, when I come to tell you about the damage that Kundalini, that comes from Hinduism, but doesn't only come through Hinduism, it can come through a lot of other um, open doors that we've been exposed to. And you begin to understand how damaging that one entity is. Not even an end, it's more than that, okay? It's damaging to us. And that's just one. You will say, I feel like if I, I don't know, it's an incessant pit of filth. No, that's not it. The Holy Spirit, it's called progressive sanctification. It's in the Bible. He is changing us more and more into his image and likeness. We are not supposed to be Christians who just come, get a little thing and go. We are supposed to be changed from the inside. He's changing us. So he's removing those things and exposing. So just like the Freemasonry that many of you have started to listen to and go over, little by little I'm teaching you. Some don't feel the need for it, but they don't understand. You could sit down and recite all these 33 levels of Freemasonry and still there are areas that are missed because you don't understand what it is you're seeing. But I don't want to scandalize some of you all. I want to tell you all, when I come to explain to you that there's actually a 99 degrees of Freemasonry, but I'm not going there today. I don't like to tell all you too much because you will get discouraged. We're sticking with the 33. 
but there are those that go and they have 99 degrees. Do you understand? So when you think you did it all and you don't know why, who cares what it is? God will show you. Stop losing sleep over it. What does God want? He wants us to walk holy. And he's telling us, yes, spiritual warfare is an important part of our walk on earth. However, what really is this thing called spiritual warfare? Because at the end of the day, we can read in Ephesians 6, 11 to 18, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So just that alone should help you to understand where a lot of your attacks will come from. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God. And when you study this verse, understand if it's not the whole armor, you have holes in your armor because you are lacking pieces. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day in which we are standing and there are more, there's more evil to come. There's more tribulation on this earth to come before the tribulation starts. There's a lot that's going to start happening more and more between now and the end of the year, for sure in the US. And I keep telling you all, where Trinidad and Tobago is concerned, always be ready. That's all I could tell you. So if today you lose your life, you're gonna be with the Lord. And if you live and others lose their lives, you will be in a position for God to use you as a remnant to keep going ahead in this nation. We spoke about it on Sunday. We spoke about it last, last Friday. And it says here, and having done all to stand firm, having done all, you all the all, what is the all? The all is every little thing we've been feeding you, sharing with you, and there will be other churches doing the same, hopefully for their own people that God has called them to feed, because God is speaking to his churches, and they have some that are not listening, but that is not our business. Having done all, it is the all, and, the, and unfortunately, there's, there's a all that's not an all. We're so busy wanting to please people and be accepted and whatever. And while that is, I can't tell you it's not important. What's important is that you are able to stand. Having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as shoes for your feet. Having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. I'm not doing an exegesis of this passage. It's an introduction to share a couple things with you. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert, keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints. I want you to understand that warfare has the exact same goals for us in the example given of taking the land that I just read here because this is the way God calls our posture to be. It's a commandment for all believers. We have a goal in mind. We are occupying until he comes. Or should he take us before he comes, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Please don't let your understanding of going to be with the Lord be what you see on Facebook and company. Please, 
everybody going to heaven according to what you see. And I'm here to tell you, according to the word of God, God does not want anyone to perish. It was said so, but it says the road is narrow and few will find it. I just have to bring us back to what the Bible says. No, don't take few for what you understand few to mean. Well, there's only three of us in here. That's not what it's saying. It's saying the proportion of who will be saved could be three versus 50, but we are talking here millions of people. So it's quite possible you're all included. But when you compare it to the billions in the world, it is going to be a remnant. So take the fraction of there were maybe four people or three people I didn't count who were watching what happened on the cross with Jesus. There used to be a church of 7,000. There was only three or four left. Do you understand? Few. And you have to be part of the few. But because it's few, it isn't the way they're all telling you. You just have to say that you believe in Jesus. The demons believe in Jesus. It's called, it's called obedience. It's called healing. It's called deliverance because those are the things that affect you. And I want to say to a couple of you who have not felt the need to ask about fragmentation of the soul because it's something that doesn't belong in your theology because you don't read the whole Bible. I want you to understand, you can have demons that affect you, but you can have occultic parts of your soul that operate in witchcraft. And for those of you who are hearing this and it's now catching your attention, I've been teaching it for a long time. And if you take a person where the generational line was divination or they perhaps were introduced to divination through some pagan religion that they were part of. Then they became a Christian. And they went through possible trauma in their lives. And parts of their soul fragmented, like the psychiatrists tell you, that you pay a lot of money to be told, there are books written on it, where they see trauma in the back of the brain on an MRI. And there are parts of your soul, you can have an occultic part of your soul that does not like the fact that you are saved. You say, well, how can that be? But your soul has mind, will, and emotions. Your soul, it's your soul. We're not talking about your spirit, man. So when your soul fragments, that piece, that's what they call multiple personality. One personality, another personality. You know it better that way. The name for it now is Disassociative Identity Disorder. I'm not here to give you a lecture. I'm here to tell you, there's some of you, you're always bawling, you're fighting demons. And when I've sat you down, you realize it's your own soul you're fighting. And you've been able to get help because you can't cast out your soul. But your soul could be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is the intellect part of your soul. The Bible talks about it. If your soul, if, if every part of your soul was all renewed, the word would not say be transformed by the renewing. So there are some of you, I just want to leave you with this before I continue. It's not demons that you're fighting. Demons are attached to your soul. So they will, they will make it worse. Do you understand? You can bind them, but you've got to get help for your soul. You've got to get help for your soul because your soul is acting out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your soul is acting against you, is working against you. That's why David had to say, soul, why are you don't gas? Why you have to talk to his soul and ask his soul, why are you don't gas? Those of you who don't understand what I'm saying, Please ask for the link to start to understand because I'm not going to repeat it. It's about, I don't know, six sessions. I have no idea. Many of you in sessions are getting help for damaged parts of your soul that you thought was demons harassing you all the time. I have people who have 
come out of satanic ritual abuse. And when they are talking about Jesus, they're feeling things choking them. And when we say, go in Jesus, nothing go in. Nothing. Till, I'm not going to tell you how, but in a session, who inside continues to choke? So, so, so. You know the difference between demons and your soul. You, the demons, demons don't say, I care for her, but I want her to not serve Jesus. Demons don't talk so. Demons don't care about nobody. You understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is, some of you are fighting down the place with demons. When you had trauma in your life, your soul is damaged, or Satan still owns part of your soul, and you need to have that part renewed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Not cast out. So all of those who want to shoot me, who say I'm now teaching all kind of thing, hear what? I don't have a thousand dollars to give you. But if you save up, go to the psychiatrist's office, sit there, and start to talk to them about people who need meds because their personalities change, they're not crazy people. Do you understand? There's coping mechanisms God gives us when we've been traumatized, and Satan has cashed in on that. And in abusing people, causing them to be traumatized, he's found ways that parts of their soul that splits work for him. He owns those parts. Remember, Satan wants your soul. You never hear it saying so Satan wants your spirit, because the Holy Spirit lives in you. He wants your soul, he wants your mind, he wants your emotions. Okay, and demons tag along, so they make it worse. So I want, I had to throw that in, because some of you, you're, you're carrying on with the demons. You haven't yet asked for an appointment to ask, is it really demons? There's so many demons always. How demons bothering you so much if you're walking holy? Now I understand that there are some things in your generational line, but all you come now. It, God, God knows, it, it, there's layers, it's not everything going overnight. How they always attacking you? I don't accept that you are so bad that you have to be choked all the time and attacked and this and that. But your theology is so religious, all you know about is demons. They're under our feet, y'all. So how we got on to this, because I'm not going to go on for, for, for long, is a lot, but I'm not going to say all. Yesterday, in the session with the Freemasons, there's some real deep stuff we hit, not because we dealt with Baphomet, that's okay, but what defilement Baphomet brings into our lives, some people were shocked. So I had to be very graphic because I wasn't going to try to sugarcoat it. I don't sugarcoat nothing. I will tell you that we have, like, I can't go into detail now. I spelt it out in the session. Those of you that don't have the link, you need to ask for it, but it's not for circulation. So it's not going up on global, okay? However, I showed you all the agenda of Baphomet, Satan, okay? Another name for him. I showed you the agenda with the homosexuals and the transgender. So, we started to talk about how sodomy is part of the agenda. So they teach, they, 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 they act as if they teach you, or you pick it up, that in, mar in, in marriage, just in Normal life, some people, before they even knew that um, premarital sex was wrong, they thought that I was okay. I can't go into detail as they're churning in the audience, but I need you all to understand something. A lot of the attacks that we are getting is things that we did that nobody told us was a huge open door for severe attacks as we learned yesterday. There's not no little piece of, it's a covenant with Baphomet you make when you go into that type of defilement. And you tell yourself, nah, 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 I can do what I want. Just go back and listen now. 
Just go back and listen. And let me give you a, li a next a next thing that some of you were writing me about after. And I'm not going into detail because of the children in the audience, but I just want you to understand something. Some of you were writing me about this after. And I said to you, go ahead and renounce it. And as always, we will be able to explain. Right? But one of the things was, I said there that sexual intercourse with menstrual blood is a no-no. And many of you will be like, you're infringing on my right to be free. But if you go into the Bible and understand what it says, and I, and I, and I was coming today, but the, the Holy Spirit, even as I rested in his presence, because I was exhausted, long story, I was talking to you all about that earlier. Um, I know he wasn't leading me that way, except to say something to some of you. And in time, I will explain to you that actually, there's something called a menstrual blood ritual that you don't even know you have taken part in that can cause much harm to your spiritual walk. Does it mean you're not going to heaven? I'm not saying that, but you need to know. You have to renounce it. And I will explain to you at some point in time, probably a group session, because I don't like the open sessions for some of these topics, why you have to renounce it and how there's use what I just described in their rituals. So it doesn't matter if you were innocent, because you can be initiated into witchcraft through ignorance. The word of God says in Leviticus 11, 1, all the way to um, chapter 15, the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law gave you provisions for clean and unclean. You go, tell me, we're not under the law. But I want you to understand, Jesus came to fulfill the law. But there are some things he did not change. He continues to tell you, don't eat blood. Don't, you're not supposed to eat or drink blood. They are th hey, listen, we are not under the law, but to my understanding, and I can't teach this whole thing here, there are things in that Mosaic law that he continued to say in the New Testament. So it's not that we are talking about the material that we wear, because there's a lot of things with the material and clothes and so, but... He taught about what he considered clean and unclean. And it says here, a woman undergoing menstruation is perceived as unclean for seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Baphomet loves anything unclean. So he will use anything unclean. I spoke to you all in the session. I was a lot more graphic, and I said to you, that when you are working with people who come out of divination, the kinds of things that they used to do, they will use phrases like, witches and warlocks are filthy, like they, 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 they only want to use filth, body fluids, you name it, you understand. So without, go, without much ado, I said today, in answer to some of you who are asking, is this something you're going to need to renounce? Yes, but I would prefer you to know the length and breadth of some of those rituals, not to teach you anything about doing... I never teach people to do witchcraft. I tell people, and I said this yesterday, and I need to give you back the scripture so that you will know in the Bible, we read about Baalism. We read about... Many of the pagan gods that were worshipped, and I just want to share with you, before I close today, how modern day is doing the same thing. But because you don't know what the Old Testament says, to open your eyes and your heart to what went on with those Israelites, we are repeating the same thing, but under different names. So, having said to you, yes, there are rituals connected with what I just said, and because there are children in front of me, I'm not going to say it again, right? And that's the reason why, aside from the first thing that I said, 
that way of sexual intercourse is defilement, and of course, of course, it's the opening for filth, so you can't mix it up with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? It's the same thing with the ritual using that other kind of blood. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the more you learn these things, is the more you realize, ups, no wonder I still get an attack. I didn't even know I had to renounce this. And this is what is happening to people. They're not paranoid. They're like, we didn't know. We didn't understand. We didn't even know the black pudding. We was eating blood. You know it's blood, right? Okay. But we didn't know. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But please, don't get paranoid. Just want to be holy. Just ask him. Just allow yourself to be fed with what's what's what what's, what's ministering to the whole church because the word is going to cut the soul, the spirit, the bone and the marrow. And when you hear bone and marrow, you know it's going down into the bloodline. It's going down into that bloodline and getting into the bloodline. That's why, that's why the word is described that way. So I will say to you what I said yesterday. Numbers 25, 3. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Okay, so just so you know, Baalism was taking place and God's anger was aroused. I'm giving you another, a couple examples. Judges 3, 7, so the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. When you hear these things, I have been teaching you what the modern day Baals is, what the modern day Asherahs is. So you'll be like, no, 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 that's in the Old Testament. Okay, well, let's talk the modern day names. Because you hear how they got God angry. But for lack of knowledge, some of us are angering God and not understanding that we are walking in defilement. So I want to say this to you that to start off with, we are called to rule and reign and reflect the glory of God. That was the original goal for mankind and the church. But that's not what's happening. So we have to say, okay, um, there's high levels of compromise. Scriptures are twisted to suit a world where they're not dealing with the conflict that we are dealing with. We, it's almost like living in a bubble and not addressing. And when we say conflict, some were shocked with some of the things they were hearing yesterday that exists. So when you live in a little bubble, you will take scripture and make it what you wanted to make to suit your little world. That's why you have to be part of a church to hear what God is saying to all of us. Because I may hear something, you will hear something, you will hear and you will come. And if, if truth be known, everybody aside from thinking the pastor preaching your business, which the word of God will preach our business because all of us need to hear it. Your understanding of how it's affecting you all will all be different. Okay? Because there's different things going on in all our lives. But I want you to know that... There are high levels of immorality, pornography, divorce, adultery in the body of Christ. And of course, a significant focus on money and finances. There's nothing wrong with needing to have money, but the focus has gone south for many people. Not everybody. All right? So I want us to know that at the end of the day, let me tell you what we are up against which is what I just wanted to share with you for the time that we have. Just to encourage you. Why? Because what happens is we are coming to church and we are literally not understanding his yoke is easy and his burden is light. What does that mean? It does not mean that there are not struggles in your life. But there is suffering because of unresolved sin more than anything else. The walk is not an easy one, but it is one 
that Jesus said, Father, do not take them out of this world. Just keep them from the evil one. So what's happening is we are walking in this world, but it's like we, we punch in the devil as we're going along. Po, po, po. Let me take a breath. Po, po, po. Let me take a breath. Po, po, po. Oh, yeah, what is that? Uh, what is that? Uh, who told you that that's the walk? Of course, you're going to go into battle. But plenty of the po, po, po is because they have sin there that you don't know is there. Or maybe you know. You have intentional. But there's some of us, we are walking holy. A sin holy and not making a mockery of it. But we don't understand they have some things there that have to go. And that's why you need to hear what God is saying. It's like he's, there's no new revelation. But it's not going to be, okay, well, let me see. Did you curse today? Did you, did you lie? They have some that have chronic line, line problems. Eh? But that's, that's besides the point, right? Um, so what you did, but you didn't do nothing terrible. Saints, listen. Me with the Freemasons on both sides of my family. That alone. When you hear about those curses that they make over the generations, and that's just that, okay? There could be Hinduism. There could be Rosicrucianism. There could be Kabbalah. There could be Druidism. There's a whole, I call in pagan religions. I call all kind of Egyptian gods. Do you understand? But you don't have to be, oh gosh, what are you going to do? It's a lot. No. No, what are you supposed to do? Find a church and settle down. Because Sunday alone is not enough to help you. Because it's going to get tougher out there. And Satan is using weapons and he studies us. What is the weaknesses? What I could use against this one. You forget he went and he said to God, give me a little chance with Job now. Take away everything and see if he will still not curse you. Because Job, read about it in the beginning. He always, always offered up prayers for his children who wasn't following the right way. He was always offering up sacrifices and all these things. And he studied Job and he said, that, mm -hmm, he'll curse you. Give me a chance now. He studies us. He knows the weaknesses. He knows what we do not know that we're supposed to know. Because God is now, I am not the only one, I'm sure there are others, who literally, I refuse to accept that we worship a God who we have to be every minute, pow, pow, pow. Okay, I'm breathing, pow, pow, pow. By the time I reach across there, I can't breathe, my heart rate high, or it lowers. No, I'm not accepting. I say, God, if we have to help those coming out of Satanism, I sleep at night. What do you want me to do? Be afraid that somebody will come and kill me in my sleep? Because somebody I'm helping has legion. Y'all, I'm serious when I tell you. This is the depths that some are coming out of. I might have one hour to talk because that's the only time. What do you want me to do? Listen to me. The demons better get affected, you understand? Through the power of God. How? Not because of me. But make no mistake, I better walk holy and I better continue to listen to the messages coming out of this church because some of you all feel, because we preach the messages, we don't have to listen. Listen to me. Ask Rev, if he come and only bother me, we're not trying to listen to last week's message because I want to hear what really came out of my mouth because I wasn't looking at my notes. I want God to minister to me. Oh, the Freemason seminars. If you are in this church and you are to start off with your ministry and you are listening to those group sessions, you're going to find yourself in trouble soon because there's doors that are open. And there are some of us that know about it, but I've given you an example because I want to share with you all how what is going on today where a lot of the things that we are exposed to, we they were exposed to, but they're under different names. So with the Freemasons, there's a lot of things today you are finding. Oh my gosh, 
for true. I saw that on a building. But wait, night in my house. Somebody sent me a message. In the house, whatever it is we were describing, is on some of the things in their house. Some people are finding paraphernalia that they now know is to do with Freemasonry and other things too. So they're getting it out of their house. They didn't know these. They didn't know that in the school that they're teaching, they have them trying to do stuff that they didn't understand is paganism. Because we don't understand some of these things because it's not taught. But it's in the Bible. You're supposed to read the whole Bible. So I want to give you this before we close to ask God to help us. And this is the reason why. Just simply praying a set of prayer points and asking for deliverance is not enough. Nothing is wrong with prayer points. But I will say to you, if the prayer points are such that your brain is not engaged when you're saying it, all you're doing is chanting. And sending yourself into a trance and telling yourself you're praying to the true and living God. I want you to know when they chant, they use anything to chant to send themselves into a trance. So when you say you're praying, oh no, I pray in the word, I pray in the word, but I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just saying it over and over and over and over. You're actually doing witchcraft to your own self. Do you understand? Engage your mind. God does not bypass the mind. I want you to know that the kingdom of darkness has come out in full force. Open conflict against believers. There's a radical increase in efforts to wipe out all evidence of God. So ancient entities transform themselves to today's world in the following way. I just spoke to you about Baal. So from demanding crops of wheat, where that's where they would be worshiping Baal, it would be rural areas and whatever, it's now worship on the stock exchange. Baalism has presented itself as worship. The stock exchange is what has your attention. And some of you are going to get upset with me. But you know, the seasons of the forex that have come into churches and left some people bankrupt. But those are the top ended up. Well, you know what I'm talking about, right? Those are the top ended up with all the money and left. They all came in because they were Christians that came into churches to teach them how to do pyramid schemes. They call it Christian pyramid schemes. And left, left some people bankrupt. And the ones at the top did well. And now, if you check them out, none of them in the forex thing again. Baalism. So when you talk Baalism, you say, well, I wasn't there in the book of Numbers, but you're here today. Okay, and I can probably show you even more how it's Baalism, because Baalism has a lot of other aspects to it, but it's the obsession with mammon and the worship of living your life based on what you earn till you can't figure nothing else out. You have no time for God. You have no time for nothing. Astarte. From temple sex, which is where that God was worshipped, to gates of pornography and perversion. Same, same God, same pagan God. Molech, from child sacrifice to abortion clinics all around the world. Same thing. I can pick out all the pagan gods in the Bible, starting even with Egypt, going way back, and show you how those gods are being worshipped today by Christians. They're being worshipped by non-Christians too, but they're being worshipped by Christians because they're not coming with a label. And they have a little, a little, um, a little line drawn where we think it's, it's still, mm, might me that, it's okay. For, it is for freedom that Christ died. I'm free to make my own mind up. You are. But when you look at the word of God, you will be judged by the word, 
even if you made up your own mind. So I want us to know, because we are here, because we're desperate. I said this earlier, and I will just say it to you. Sometimes you go through very, very painful, painful situations. And we don't know when we would go through painful. I could tell you, for this year, I don't want to say how long and for the year to finish, huh? because I believe that God is allows and he allows, but it has been a very hard year. And many of you, pain, turmoil. And I'm so grateful that he has not left us. However, I'm not walking broku. I refuse to walk broku. And what's going to happen? For those who don't know what broku is, it's called broku foot. You know, a long time said. And, and, and I'm making a joke, eh? But the way my body hurts sometimes, I'm actually walking that way, which is terrible. But, but I know all you're praying for me. So what I'm trying to say is that what's happening right now is that we are beginning to see that when we talk about something like Baalism is demanding his worship on the stock exchanges of the world. And I didn't talk to you all yesterday about the worship of the bull, but you will see the icon. We talked about the goat, but not the bull. And you will see those icons around. It's worship of Baal. When you look at certain things publicly and there is that, that, um, that particular emblem or whatever. But if we talk about um, Astarte, um, you know, this worship at the gates of pornography, it's also gone into the whole lesbian and homosexual world that we are seeing today. Where, let me tell you, you see a, who you think is a female, but it might be a male. And, and, and parents are dedicating their firstborns. If it's a female, they make a decision. God is saying it's going to be a male. So from young, they do what is called inversion gender. And they literally raise that child. So when you see that child as the opposite, like a boy, the only way you know that child was born a girl is if you see baby pictures. This is the worship of Astarte. So I'm letting you know that when you read the Old Testament, what, did, what the Israelites were condemned for, it's happening today. Okay? You say, well, that has nothing to do with me. I wouldn't do that, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But you all need to understand, it's going to get harder and harder. They're going to want to make you accept these things as if it's okay. In whatever possible way, in your own world. For me... They will come and want me to marry two males. It's already happening in Canada, and they're jailing pastors across there who will not marry two males. So you can reach here. I always tell all you, my bags pack a long time because I'm not backing down. But more than that, they will force you to have to make a stand, and it is not necessarily going to be simple things. You understand what I'm saying? Because the worship of those pagan gods is something that they don't want to stop being worshipped. So they are going to fool people. Don't feel when the Antichrist comes. You would not have been conditioned to accept things that are really not in line with the word of God. We are going to be given all the practice in the world and the persecution will start long before the Antichrist makes an appearance. And I want you to understand that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the breaking down of family structures and marriages, the whole breaking down of a father figure's role model, because the fathers are out either, either pursuing money or just what less. Okay? They're not where they're supposed to be. In their homes and being a role model for their children. Or... Very simply, something I've not talked on as yet or taught, but this whole misunderstanding of what it means to be a female, where 
we start to accept certain things that have nothing to do with being a female. I'm not here to tell you you can't work or anything. That's not, listen, that is real trivial thing that, that, that we get into arguments about. There is more than that. There's more than that, but just dropping a little hint. If as a, if as a married woman, you are having a great difficulty resolving issues in your marriage because you have to have the final say. God is not saying there isn't mutual submission, you know. But there are some that cannot trust God to lead their husbands. I am not here to tell you that some husbands are doing nonsense. But I'm here to say, even if he was doing the right thing, you still have to have the last say because your understanding of your role you have trust issues with trusting. It's really trusting God and feminism and all these things. So I'm going to close because I wanted to give you an overview of why it is you could get counterattacks because you are there living holy, but maybe you are one of those wives that must say which plumber must come and work in the house. And he can't have a say. A simple thing like that, over and over, the home is not in order. Simple like that. I'm just using a simple example. Am I saying that maybe he really doesn't know plumbers? I'm not saying that to you all. But there has been a shift in the way men understand they're supposed to be and the way women understand they're supposed to be. And that's why the men's ministry here will continue to flourish because we have real men who are speaking to real men and reminding them how to conduct themselves. But I will tell you, that service is not church by itself. You have to be fed all the other things. You have to let the Lord heal you and deliver you because all kind of strange ideas of what it means to be a male, you've been infected with the world. So I want to say as I close, because I really believe that many of us have come, we're tired, we want the Lord to just pour into us. I want to let you know that whatever the Israelites, whatever the priests in the Old Testament struggled with, whatever sin was present there, it's present today. And we are called to walk in power and authority. And many times we are seeing where we are battered. I want you to know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He has not changed. But there are foundations and layers of stuff that have to go. It will go. It will go. But it is not going to go with just once in a while really listening to a message and going into the word of God. I believe, according to Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, God calls us to preach the good news. God calls us to set the captives free. God calls us through the power of the Holy Spirit to heal the brokenhearted, which is fragmented souls to be healed and the soul made whole again. The word for heart is not your physical heart, it's soul. God has called us to proclaim liberty to the captives. God has called us to give a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the oil of joy for mourning. Why? That's the mission of Jesus, Luke 4, 18. To 20. It's a mission, and it's a mission of those who follow Jesus. So, all of what I've described is what God has called us as Christians not just to do on His behalf, we are to receive because of Him, because of what He's done. So, if you're depressed, don't stay in your depression. Come and get help, but you need Jesus, you need His Word. You need to be ministered to. You need to be in his presence. He is making it possible. If it's not in the sanctuary, it's online. Because this church 
does not close. This church is open in the day and it's open at night. Because my husband reminded me, he was just trying to figure out some evening to do something. And he said, okay, well, Monday is prayer. Okay, Tuesday is Bible study. Wednesday is Bible school and prayer. Thursday is every other Thursday is men's meeting and prayer. And Friday is tarry. He was just reminding me that... He was just, we were just talking. The church does not close. If we access, we, nobody's saying you have to come to everything, but I'm telling you that when it comes to spirit of heaviness, captive, healing the brokenhearted, deliverance and healing, listen, and personal appointments, when you need it, you cannot stay in bondage. He is removing the spots and wrinkles. Why? Not only for when he returns, life is not going to remain this way. And the word of God says, as we said it earlier, we have to do everything, we have to do all, and then we have to stand. And having done all, all stand firm. Amen? Don't give up. But that is what God wants for you. So Father, thank you for reminding us that we have the same battles that the Israelites had. But we have the whole Bible. They didn't have it. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. We have the church. They did not have the church. We have the church. We have the fivefold ministry. We have your Holy Spirit. Because at Pentecost, you came, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in each of us. God, we are so much better off. And that's why Jesus said, do not remove them. Just keep them from the evil one. So Father, I thank you. You have not left us alone, but you're offering us food. And we need to receive what you're offering us because you are faithful. You are faithful. No matter what the situation, you have made a way for us. And so, Father, I pray for everyone here and those on Zoom. And I ask you, Father, to put a hunger for more spiritual food that they will access, Father, what you are offering us through your word. And you are opening up the scriptures to show us. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same devils that was present in the past are present now and are present in the future. Through the blood and through what you are teaching us not to be unaware of the schemes of the devil, we will stand. And the enemy, where he came in one way, will leave seven ways, and us and our household will be saved. Thank you, Father, for your hope that you pour out upon us. Thank you for the joy that is ours because it comes from you. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God.